Hello, welcome to the nonprofit plug. I'm just going to wait a few seconds for people to jump in. I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday, having a blessed Tuesday, and um, thank you for joining and coming back if this is your second, third time. Um, we're still continuing on our nonprofit series for September, and I know this is going to bless you as far as the information we're talking about today. If you miss any of the replays, um, or the past series, you can go ahead and check that out on YouTube. I also have it on Instagram, and so that information is going to be great because our series is on preparing yourself to not start a nonprofit. So I'm just going to wait a few more seconds and we'll get started. All right, so welcome to the nonprofit plug. Thank you for joining or coming back if this is your first time. Second time, welcome, welcome. My name is Kia Takglen and I'm so excited to be here again on Tuesday for September series on preparing yourself to start your nonprofit, making things official if you have been on the fence about starting a nonprofit. Uh, I known a lot of people who have been on the fence and after taking my course, which will be coming up on September 30th about starting a nonprofit, if it's for you, um, that free course is on September 30th. And so that course is going to get you right off the fence. If you've been on the fence, it's going to solidify your answer to the question, should I start a nonprofit? If you want to register for that, it's absolutely free. You can click the link in my Instagram bio after we jump off here and register. Once again, it's free. You can share it with your colleagues, your friends, uh, so that they can get that information. So thank you for coming back. Thank you for watching. My topic for today is how much will I need to invest in starting a nonprofit? Depending on your state, depending on your approach, it can have varying costs. We're going to talk about some of the numbers later, but I want to highlight something that I've been saying for the past few episodes of this series is the fact that you need to involve your board in starting a nonprofit and you also need to engage your board in fundraising and having the funding coming in. Even before you have officially started your nonprofit, you need to involve them in the fundraising aspect, whether they are fundraising or they're bringing in that funding for your organization. It costs to start a nonprofit just like it does a business, and so you need that help. It's not something that you need to have on just your shoulders. You should lean on these board members and say, hey, so I asked you to join the board because I know that you believe in my mission. I also need help with the funding, especially if you want to continue the work of our organization. So keep that in mind and keep that in the forefront and always be sure to do, relay that information to them so they understand that because if there's any confusion about it, then it's going to fall all on your shoulders and you don't want to do that to yourself. So. Uh, it's a process when it comes to filing for your nonprofit, and there's a cost that comes with it. So, when you're thinking about the numbers of starting a nonprofit, it ranges from the 300s to 700s. This is if you are filing independently, and it depends on your approach. What do I mean by that? When you file with the state that you're in and you file with the IRS, because when you file for tax and status, you have to file with the state and you also have to file with the IRS. Whatever state you're in, like for example, I'm in the state of California, I had to apply with the state and with the IRS. So when you choose to file independently, the cost is going to be from the 300s to 700s when it comes to that. If you do choose to hire someone, often people do that. I personally did hire someone at the time. Now that I know how to actually file myself, I, if I would have gone back, I would have just filed on my own. But you're looking at that price range. Um, and yes, you can absolutely hire someone to do it if you'd like them to. But keep in mind that some of the forms are so... Um, straightforward and simple you may just want to file on your own but when it comes to the major documents you may want to consider uh, putting that information in it for someone else to assist you so there is that filing cost that comes into play also when you receive your tax and status you are going to be required to report to the IRS and the state of California or whatever state you're in on an annual basis and they are depending on that so they can 
be aware of updates that are come going through your organization, whether it's as small as the contact information or it's something major like your revenue has skyrocketed and now you're making a million dollars versus 25 grand when you first started or five grand when you first started. So you want to keep that in mind. There are fees that are associated with reporting with the state of California and the IRS. Those fees range from $20 and above. A lot of the forms you are required to file for reporting are based on um, the amount of revenue that you have coming in. So the state of California, for example, will require you to file certain documents in order for you to stay up to date, for you to inform them of any changes that have occurred, make sure you are doing things that allow you to maintain your tax exempt status because you have to continue to maintain that status. And one thing to know is if you fail to file with the state and IRS in cons consecutive years, you, re you have to realize that there is a chance you may lose your tax exempt status. And that's something you do not want to happen because you've already started your work, you're working with this population, you're serving them, they are depending on you. If you lose your tax exempt status, then you lose that opportunity to continue serving them. So you wanna make sure you're on top of things as far as reporting. If you're interested in learning more about reporting for nonprofits in the state of California specifically, feel free to click the link in my bio. I'm having a seminar, online seminar on Thursday, and that information is going to just help you with so much. But backtrack a bit. Um, if you are looking to register your nonprofit, I also have a seminar that I just had last week on that information. So you wanna have those two seminars that you're signing up for because you want to be able to get your tax exempt status, but you also wanna be able to keep it, um, especially for the long run when it comes to your organization. For the state of Texas, they have a variety of other laws, but you can expect that the information is most likely going to be the same. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna go to your Secretary of State for Texas, you're gonna type in, you can type in Google, um, file for a nonprofit in Texas, and they'll most likely take you to the Secretary of State website, and they will have you fill out a few forms. The forms vary by state, but generally they're gonna ask you for documents such as a statement of information. They're gonna ask you to submit your articles of incorporation, etc. So just do your research online. One thing I point out for nonprofits when they're starting out is to do a search. You can do a search on your business search for the Secretary of State. So whatever state you're in, type in your state, California, for example, Secretary of State Business Search. Type that into Google. Look up the name that you're thinking about for your nonprofit. My nonprofit is Dare Humanity. Before it happened, I went and I typed that name into the state that I'm in, and I said, Dare Humanity, is it available? If it's not available, you're going to have to consider another name. If it is available, then go full force and register your nonprofit. So that's a key point that I want to... Um, to give to you. So going back to reporting fees, we're saying that it's important that you keep in mind and put your calendar, sync your calendar for those reporting dates because if you lose your tax exempt status, you're not gonna be able to continue your work. Moving on to other fees and costs when it comes to starting a nonprofit is your future programming and services. Even if you're just starting out, you still want to be thinking ahead about what type of funding needs to go into your future programming and your services. So if, for example, you're wanting to start a summer program, your organization specifically just focuses on summer programs in Brooklyn. This is an example. You're going to need that funding in order to continue that those summer camps each year. You're going to think about the small details of that, putting that together, having being able to serve those kids, what kind of resources are they going to need? Do they get lunch every day? Do they have um, dinner? Do they have certain activities they do? Do they need sports equipment? So you're going to want to consider that as well. I always recommend that nonprofits start out small when it comes to programs and services. You don't want to overwhelm yourself and not be able to complete certain things and keep up with the schedule when you have five different programs coming on, going on, and you don't even have the capacity to do that as an individual, especially if you're the only one who is um, directly involved in doing the work. Another cost that you're going to come across is your administrative fees, uh, any supplies that you need. If you have staff, uh, you'll have that 
staffing budget as well and subscriptions. One of the examples of a subscription that my organization has is MailChimp. Um, and MailChimp is a platform for emails that allows you to do marketing via email and it's a way for you to design the email itself so it's not like a regular email that's set up. So you're going to want to think about that as well because those costs come out of your organization's funds. Another cost you want to think about is the cost of any bank fees, for example. When you select a bank just like the one that is in your, um, for your personal account, that funding that is taken out for their fees. So for example, they say you need to have a $2,500 minimum amount in your account in, f in order for you to be able to um, have zero fees on your account. If they're taking out $12, for example, that takes out money that could go towards something else. So you wanna consider that when selecting a bank. Don't Make sure it's not a high amount, but make sure it's reasonable um, so that when you're developing your funding, developing your organization, it's not too much that is being taken out. Okay, so you said you formed a 501c3 in 2011, but haven't been active since 2014. I, you know that your status is inactive, but what would you suggest to reinstate your status? So in order to reinstate your status, you're going to need to talk to um, someone who is a specialist in filing in your state. I believe you said your state is Texas, so you want to reach out to someone who is able to help you with filing for refiling because when you, when you get out of being inactive it may be difficult to, difficult to be active again and there's a process that goes for that. Um, what I can do is if you want to send an email to contact at kiaharris.com I can ask the individual who helped me file um, if he has the ability to help others file in the state of, Calif state of Texas and if he's able to help with um, reactivating the organization. So if you send me an email at contact at kiaharris.com, do not send me a DM because I'm not going to um, provide the information that way. If you send that email to me, then I can give you his contact information. You can ask him directly. Otherwise, you can do your research and ask around to find um, someone who files for nonprofits specifically in your state and helps with reactivating their status. So. That is all for the nonprofit plug. I am so happy that you came back. Um, if this is your first time, if you're watching the replay, we're going to be continuing this series for September. Next time, we're going to be talking about um, why you need to start your organization. A lot of people are on the fence. They make excuses. They say, oh, I can't do this. Oh, it costs too much money. Well, if you go back to what I said in the beginning of this chat is a fact that you need to involve your board. If your board has four members, the cost is a total of $500. Split that up between the board members and uh, ask them to help you because if they are engaging in the organization, they want to be a part of the organization, they should want to help with funding. So that's all um, for the nonprofit plug. I'm going to leave a few seconds for you to ask any questions, so type away um, if you have any additional questions feel free to type. I'm going to just sit here for a few seconds while you do that. I'm also going to think about something else that I may have missed or can add on today's discussion. Also, another myth about nonprofits is that you cannot get funding when you start out. That is a myth. Um, there is funding for nonprofits. As you can see, there's million dollar organizations that are out there not to say you're going to be able to achieve that within the first year. What I'm saying is that there is funding and people are still giving at this time. People are still giving in the midst of everything that's going on because they know that there's a need and the organizations are part of the people and the organizations who are able to orchestrate and help people and communities achieve those needs. So don't be afraid to ask people for money. Um, if you have your tax exempt status, because if you're asking people for money and you do not have your tax exempt status, that means that you are asking um, for basically for them to give the money to you. It's not a tax write-off for them, so just make sure you let them know that. It's not going to be a tax write-off for getting our tax exempt status. So I will close it out for this nonprofit plug every Tuesday 
12 30 p.m on instagram 12 15 on periscope so i do periscope first and i come back here uh, i believe this blessed you if it did send a dm to someone with this um link and then join me next time for the nonprofit plug also next week monday i will be taking part in the social impact conversation series with a group of women um, who are in the nonprofit sector who have a wealth of information to offer you. I will be posting um, information about that again where you can sign up. It's $30 a day. You can decide which parts you want to join. If you want to just join day one, day three, um, you can decide on that. But I will be speaking on September 21st, day one. I will be talking about the call and the purpose that you have to start a nonprofit organization. I also will be sharing my personal story about why I started a nonprofit and uh, why I answered the call. Because when it comes to your purpose, you have to answer it and you have to accept it. And if you do not accept it, then you're leaving the area open for that person, that individual, that community to not be served because you are not choosing to answer the call. So thank you for joining the nonprofit plug. Um, connect with me, kiaharris.com, and I will see you next time.